Hello everybody, welcome back to English Law. So I want to talk about um, involuntary manslaughter now. So manslaughter is sort of a, is killing another human being um, uh, accidentally. Um, anyway, so there are t three types of, um, of, of uh, involuntary manslaughter. They're foresight or reckless manslaughter, that's one type. The second one is unlawful manslaughter, sometimes it's called constructive manslaughter. And the third one is gross negligence manslaughter, which is when you cause someone's death through omissions, when you're supposed to care for them and you do not care for them adequately. Um, okay, so the tricky thing is um, there is a um, considerable overlap between them. Take High in that case, 1975, or Smith, 1961. Um, in, in, in both cases, these people killed others while doing something very perilous. Remember um, Miss Hyam, um, she had the bright idea of um, scaring away her rival in love by setting fire to her love rival's house. The baser would scare that woman away and then Miss Hyam could marry that woman's husband. But um, the best laid plans of, plans of mice and men gang after Rye and um, Hyam managed to burn the woman's three children to death, which obviously did not endear Miss Hyam to the husband. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so um, uh, in Smith, he drove his car in uh, an attempt to get a police officer to run away. The police officer there to arrest him and the policeman was hit and killed. So um, the defendants were not, um, uh, would not, were not charged with murder because remember murder requires intention to kill or cause grievous bodily harm. Seems to me, Smith, surely that was murder. But anyway, reckless manslaughter. That will operate if the prosecution can demonstrate that the person foresaw that death or serious injury was going to result. Gross negligence manslaughter, that is, um, it doesn't matter whether the prosecution can show foresight of death or serious injury, but the jury um, would consider these um, acts to be grossly negligent as to whether there was a chance someone was going to die or not. Constructive manslaughter. In both cases, the defendants would kill, would kill people whilst they're doing something which was illegal and perilous. Um, right. So the prosecution, um, they usually charge whichever type of manslaughter they think is, uh, is the lowest evidential burden. Um, constructive manslaughter usually because they say it's constructed out of the others, right? Um, uh, okay, so let's see how distinctive these things are. Um, anyway, uh, reckless manslaughter is, is, is seldom charged because that you're acting with the foresight that death or major injury will result. In most cases, reckless manslaughter is uh, was constructive manslaughter, i.e. an unlawful act manslaughter. Reckless manslaughter is used when the defendant is charged with murder and the judge tells the jury, no, we have to find the defendant guilty of manslaughter if you're not persuaded that there was the intention necessary to convict the, 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 the defendant because the defendant didn't foresee death or serious injury was likely to result from his act. Um, there are examples of this. Hyam, 1975. Goodfellow, 1986. Hancock and Shanklin, 1985. So we all know that um, uh, this is about reckless manslaughter. Constructive manslaughter is the right thing to charge where there's evidence that the death uh, arose from an unlawful act, an act which uh, is objectively dangerous, but there's not enough evidence to show that the defendant intended or foresaw that um, death or a serious wound would result, or perhaps was grossly negligent as to the chance that uh, death would, would follow. Okay, so there's constructive manslaughter. Um, if you, so you just want, you punch somebody and then they die from that, you wouldn't expect someone to die from that. So that's actually not murder. Um, because uh, it's not the other two forms of manslaughter, because the, the assailant who punches a man, who then dies as a result, didn't think that death or grievous bodily harm was going to result. He wasn't grossly negligent at the risk of death. He didn't have some sort of duty of care towards that person. So gross negligence manslaughter is the right charge where there isn't enough evidence that the uh, defendant foresaw that death or, or serious injury was likely to be consequent upon his behaviour. Um, okay. Uh, Anyway, so those the, the, the gross negligence is about those who kill someone whilst they're doing something legal, like performing their duties as a doctor, nurse, police officer, parent, or whatever. But but they're they are so careless that this is criminous. So the the almost complete lack of diligence is what makes it a crime. 
Um, it can be an omission, failing to do what they ought to have done. Um, train drivers who um, ignore signals, um, incompetent electricians who cause people to be electrocuted, um, uh, construction workers who don't follow building regulations and cause death that are that way. Um, okay, uh, right, constructive manslaughter. So this is sometimes called unlawful manslaughter because um, the uh, liability here doesn't, doesn't um, uh, arise from the actus reus and the mens rea um, because there's no consequence in the mental state. The liability of this crime is constructed out of other aspects of it. For instance, you can be guilty of manslaughter if the death results from doing an act, criminal damage, burglary, robbery, or even theft. So the prosecution has to prove the following, that the elements of the core offence, for example, the assault, the, the assault of the criminal damage, the objective likelihood that harm would flow from the commission of that act, and lastly, that there was a uh, cause and effect relationship between the um, offence committed and the death that followed. So, um, uh, okay, so uh, we don't want to overstate the, the, the level of wrongdoing here. Anyway, let's have a look at the actus reus for constructive manslaughter. So there has got to be an action. So, uh, and the act must cause the death. So this cannot be committed by omission. Omissions are not um, enough, even when there's duty of care. Low 1973 was a case about this. The defendant was charged with constructive manslaughter um, because he had uh, neglected his child terribly. Um, he was found guilty because he caused his... Um, uh, the child's death through through um, this crime of not looking after the child. That was the willful neglect of a child, as per Section 1 of the Children and Young Persons Act 1933. But the defendant's um, conviction was overturned on appeal. The Court of Appeal said that you must have an act for constructive manslaughter. It cannot be an omission. Um, so, uh, this uh, constructive manslaughter would be the right charge if he'd caned his son so severely he died. Look at a case called Chancellor from about 19, from about 1860, where a teacher beat his child to death. Um, okay, so there were no actions proven in this case in Lowe that caused the child's death. So it should have been gross negligence manslaughter. So the prosecution, they charged constructive manslaughter because um, they thought it was simpler to show the commission of Section 1 offence um, than it was to demonstrate gross negligence. Uh, anyway, so remember, uh, in constructive manslaughter, the act must be um, a, a crime. Look at Franklin, 1983. In this case, a man, he threw a wooden crate off a pier, then um, not wanting to harm anyone or being aware there was a risk to anyone, but that crate hit someone swimming in the sea and killed the swimmer. So the um, uh, defendant, he was found guilty of constructive manslaughter. However, on appeal, that was quashed um, because what he had done was not a crime. It's not a crime to throw a wooden crate into the sea. I wasn't aiming at anyone. Um, it was just terribly unlucky. Uh, okay, so you, so in constructive manslaughter, you've got to say, was the original action a crime? And if it wasn't, it can't be constructive manslaughter. Um, okay, and which crime that is, the, def the the prosecution has to say. Is it criminal damage or what? Jennings, 1990, is a case where that was laid out. There's another important case called Larkin, 1943. Well, there's one called Lamb, 1967. And these are leading cases for the idea the prosecution has to be able to prove all aspects of the um, crime to get a, a conviction for constructive manslaughter. The, pro the pros prosecution's task goes further. If the defendant is a defence to that core offence, the offence which actually caused the, caused the death, um, if there was consent or self-defence, then the person can't be convicted. Um, so Scarlet, 1993, was a case where a publican had to get a rowdy drunkard out of his alehouse. He pushed the guy out. The um, a drunk fell down, fractured his skull on the street and died. So um, anyway, the, the, the um, publican, he was found guilty of constructive manslaughter. Um, but then uh, on appeal, uh, it was overturned because he was performing a lawful duty, as in preventing this disorderly behaviour as pub, pushing the person out with proportionate force. It was just incredibly lucky, unlucky the guy fell over backwards, hit his head and died from that. Um, because there was no crime originally. It was a reasonable use of force. It was self-defensive. Uh, inevitably, you have to eject people from pubs from time to time. All right, constructive manslaughter, they're crimes of negligence, but these are qualified. There are some activities which, if done, um, are allowed by law, if done properly, but are illegal if performed dangerously and negligently. Driving would be a key example. If, so, if a driver 
kill someone through speeding or driving under the influence of alcohol or whatever, or dangerous driving, then that's a crime. So, but is the def is the defendant guilty of, of, of constructive manslaughter? Well, mm, this it depends. Um, a lot of people um, it, uh, on, on just how, how badly he's doing it. And was there any contributory negligence by the victim? Um, so uh, we don't want to take over the gross negligence manslaughter, um, making the convictions too easy. Andrews 1937 was a case about this, where the House of Lords said that only acts which are criminal in themselves can be the core of constructive manslaughter cases. So um, if, if what you're doing is, is legal generally, but a criminal only because you performed it so badly, as in driving, but driving dangerously or driving drunk, um, then the prosecution has to charge gross negligence of manslaughter. They cannot charge constructive manslaughter. All right, there are other things to, to, to bear in mind. So the prosecution um, has to prove the carelessness and the dangerousness of the crime. Um, okay, so in constructive manslaughter, remember that the, the, the action must be dangerous. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily mean that it was life-threatening, but it means of, of something that, that would cause some harm. So we know that punching people is dangerous. It results in, in some injury, even if it's trifling. Um, if the punch is a core activity, then that could cause death. Church 1966 was a case about this. Lord Justice Edmund Davies heard the case, and he gave, um, this is a, the um, seminal definition of a dangerous act. The act must be such that all sober and reasonable people would never be recognised the subject it must be subject to the other per, subject the other person to at least a risk of some harm resulting therefrom, albeit not serious harm. Close quotation. Um, so um, here, when it says the the other person, that means the person who gets hit. Um, now, the action doesn't have to be uh, direct against the victim; could be direct against somebody else, but actually ends up hurting the victim. Mitchell, 1983, was a case about this. You might remember people are queuing in the, in, the, in the post office. There's a row about is someone queue jumping. One man shoves another, which caused this man to hit, fall on top of a woman and kill her. Okay. We know that shoving a person is, is going to cause harm. And um, that, that harmful act was not directed at the victim who died. Nevertheless, there was liability. Uh, okay. So, um, anyway... There are different um, cases here where the same action uh, will show that there it's, it's hard to say what's a dangerous act and what's not. In Dawson 1985, a, a, a defendant, he pointed a toy gun, a quite convincing looking toy gun, at um, a victim during a robbery. The victim had a terrible heart condition. He, he suffered a heart attack and died. So the defendant was found guilty of, of, of constructive manslaughter. But um, in, then, then his he appealed, and his appeal was allowed, because the uh, judge should have told the jury to convict only if they believed that pointing a gun at someone was um, objectively dangerous, or if it was a toy gun. The victim didn't know it was a toy gun. This he, the whole reason is frightened because the replica was so realistic. So um, it would only be objectively dangerous to point a, a toy gun at someone if you knew that he um, had a dicky heart. We'll come on to Watson, 1989. Here a defendant, he, he carried out a burglary on a house where um, an 87-year-old was living. The 87-year-old had a um, heart history as long as your arm. So there was um, some sort of, uh, what shall I say, face-off between them. And the old man was very frightened. He had a heart attack and died sometime later. The defendant was found guilty of manslaughter. Then he appealed. Uh, he was let off for other reasons. But anyway, the Court of Appeals said that going by the church definition, the defendant's encounter with the elderly man was not objectively dangerous. But as, um, well, well with, with the, the, the household, it was not objectively dangerous. But when it was clear he was so elderly and frail, then it became dangerous. Carrying on with the burglary after he realised this, that made it a dangerous act. Okay, and remember that um, this act, it must be the thing which results in death. It can't be something else which causes the death. So causation is problematic. Um, uh, anyway, there's the but for rule. The but for the defendant's act, the person wouldn't have died. But for the burglar breaking into the house... The old man wouldn't have had the heart attack when he did. 
So the um, remember that the defendant's um, action must be a substantial or operating cause. Um, anyway, uh, which if not wouldn't have happened without that. So if something else comes along and removes uh, D's act of all its causal potency, then that's different. That breaks the chain of causation because it supersedes the defendant's action. Uh, okay, let's, let's go to causal sequence. This is in, in, in supplying illegal drugs. So we know that selling certain drugs without a license is against the law um, and is dangerous as per the church definition. So the defendant s uh, sells or gives for free these narcotics. The victim inject injects herself and then dies. But the defendant supplied the drugs is not guilty of manslaughter because the chain of causation is broken because the victim injected herself. That's Kennedy number two, 2007. Unless, of course, the person lacks capacity, is in a minor, for example. So, um, however, if the defendant injects the victim, even with the victim's consent, then the defendant is still is still um, uh, guilty of constructive manslaughter. Okay, so you know, it's not supplying the drugs, which um, is the basis of the charge, but but injecting or administering them, because the defendant is liable because um, there was no later act. Um, that intervened, no novus actus interveniens, the cause of church, cause, the chain of causation is intact. Look at Cato 1976. Right, um, another vexed issue here is the actions of the defendant to the to the victim. Um, uh, you know, where, where the victim commits suicide, for example, what's causation? Where you say you, you take your victim as you found him. Blower, there's the test for the foresight. Roberts, was it a daft or disproportionate uh, action? Uh, Williams is a voluntary act, act, um, act test, or the way it was decided in Kennedy, or perhaps Wallace, where the Court of Appeal, they, they dodged the issue, and they said that the question to be looked at in every case is whether more than one cause led to the death. And they said, the accused acts can fairly be said to have made a significant contribution to the victim's death, close quotation. So if it, is, it makes at least a significant contribution, then it will operate. Now, what's the mens rea here? Um, the mens rea um, in, is, is constructive liability. The defendant is held liable for the crime on the basis um, of, uh, of the crime of constructive manslaughter because they committed that earlier crime which led to the death. So if the defendant is charged with constructive manslaughter um, because he's committed another crime, like, I don't know, assault or whatever, administering drugs, then we don't think about proof of causation for a minute. You have to show that the actus reus here the guilty act, as in punching somebody or injecting them with drugs or whatever, you also have to show that there's a mens rea here for assault or to, to supply illegal drugs. And um, so that is intending or re re foreseeing or being reckless to any sort of unlawful act and harm that would follow. Okay, so that's enough on that one for a minute. Toodaloo.